Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we continu continue talking about Hilbert spaces, um, primarily Hilbert spaces with complex numbers as scalars. Um, this is lecture called uh, Vectors 10. It's basically a continuation of Vectors 7, 8 and 9 where I'm talking about um, Hilbert spaces. It's all presented uh, as part of the course Math Plus and Problems on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from Unizor.com because every lecture has a textual um, description basically of the same material like a textbook. And uh, uh, obviously everything on the website is organized in logical uh, sequence menus, submenus, etc. Uh, the website is totally free. Uh, no advertisement, so it's just completely dedicated to education and uh, you can find some other courses. The prerequisite course for this one is Math for Teens. There is also Physics for Teens and there is there are some other courses like Relativity for example. Okay, so let's start. Now before we were talking about um, Hilbert spaces um, with real numbers as scalars. So let me just remind you a little bit. Uh, the Hilbert space, as we have introduced it, contains two major um, sets in itself. Um, the one which is called a vector space, it's abstract vector space. It's a linear vector space, which means there is an operation of uh, addition, which is obviously commutative, associative, etc. Um, and there is a set of scalars, which usually we're, we were considering real numbers, um, with uh, operations of multiplication of vector times uh, some kind of element from uh, the scalars, which is resulted in, in, in another vector. So basically, as a basic model, you can consider vectors in two-dimensional um, uh, Euclidean space, vectors on the plane, and the uh, addition of vectors was, as we were introducing, like this, one vector plus another, that's the result, and multiplication would be actually like extending or um, shrinking the vector within the same direction. So this is basically a linear vector space. Now, to become a Hilbert space, we have al also introduced a scalar product of two vectors. So if you have two vectors, v1 and v2, scalar product, I will use <coughs> angle brackets. Um, sometimes I'm using just a dot, because usually it was actually called dot product. Um, but then there is kind of a um, uh, mixture of uh, dot used as scalar product and dot used as a regular multiplication, for example, uh, multiplication of two real numbers. So, to avoid this, I will use uh, angle brackets and a comma in between to signify the scalar product. And as a result of this, you will have some kind of another vector which also belongs to our vector space. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a scalar product, so that's uh, some kind of a scalar which belongs to our scalars. Okay, so again, before we were considering as scalars real numbers. So multiplication by factor of 2, for example, of the vector would be just extending its length by factor of 2. Now, in physics, especially in quantum mechanics, um, it's very useful to use a concept of Hilbert space with complex uh, scalars, which maybe is not as easy to kind of imagine, but in theory, I mean, s complex numbers are numbers, and if we will properly define the multiplication uh, of complex number by some kind of a vector, then that, that's basically fine. Now, 
in simple case, and I'm not really going to discuss it, if you have a two-dimensional Euclidean space and you would like to multiply a vector by complex number, which has um, a real and imaginary part. Now, the real part would be responsible for extending or shrinking, and uh, imaginary part would be uh, responsible for turning. So, that's another definition which is perfectly valid, as long as all axioms are um, satisfied. And we were talking about many different axioms, which basically kind of define the rules of operation for this combination of an abstract vector space and um, scalar place to become a Hilbert space. Now, those ax axioms I'm not going to repeat right now. It's a previous lecture, um, one of the previous lectures. And uh, obviously, you're welcome to stop the video right now and take a look at the uh, and Unizo .com. Um, uh .com. It's vector, I believe, vector seven or eight uh, lecture in the same part of the course, and you can just refresh your memory. What's important? Well, important are obviously commutative, associative, and distributive laws. And that's where we will have a little problem. And here is why. Our um, scalar product was defined before with two very important uh, properties. First property is how multiplication by a scalar um, uh, affects this, uh, the scalar product of the vector with something else. So, if you have, let's say, vectors A and B, now you can obviously form their scalar product, which is a scalar. Now, what if you multiply vector A by some scalar? Now, when it was the real number, we were saying that this equals and equals to So, you can actually take this multiplier out of the scalar product or put it into uh, a second component, it would be exactly the same, the same thing. So that's one thing. And another thing which we were talking about was this equals BA. And with scalar product being uh, a scalar, actually, being a real number, these were the axioms which we put into our theory. And that was fine. Everything was no problem. Um, one of the subsequent kind of results of all this was that if you will multiply any um, vector, any abstract vector by itself as a scalar product, you will have a usually positive unless uh, the vector is equal to null vector. In case of a null vector, that would be zero. In case of a non-null vector, that would be a positive number. And that would be basically something which we called a square of magnitude or square of length or square of norm. Sometimes there is a word norm of the vector, which is also kind of um, used. So, that's how we were defining it. This is square. That's why it's, I mean, because it's positive, you can uh, call the square root of this. And obviously it comes from the real vectors which we were observing in, let's say, two-dimensional um, space. Because if you will scalar, a scalar will multiply vector, let's say you have vector a1, a2. This is your vector. Now, if you remember, well, A2 and A1 are coordinates, so the length of the vector would be square root of A1 square, square root of A1 square plus A2 square. 
that would be the length, right? Magnitude of the vector. The Pythagorean theorem. And obviously the square of this would be 1 square plus a2 square, which is basically a uh, scalar product of vector by itself. Because the scalar product in two-dimensional cases, you multiply the first dimension plus mu multiply the second dimension of two vectors. So that basically corresponds, and that's how we defined it in abstract case. We took it from, we took the concept from two-dimensional case, and transferred into uh, into abstract vector spaces. So this thing presents a problem in case lambda is a um, complex number, and here is why. Let me just give you an example where we will go into a contradiction. So, as our abstract vector space, I would like to take the set of all complex numbers. That's a vector space because you can add two complex numbers, you can multiply them by another scalar, uh, which happens also to be a, sc a complex number. So, in our case, both V and S are both complex numbers, set of all complex numbers, which is fine. I mean, logically, there are two different things. This one, this set of all complex numbers is considered to be a set of vectors, and this one is a set of scalars. Vectors can be multiplied by scalars, and you will get a vector. Yes, complex by times complex will be complex. Two vectors result in a vector if you will add them together, right? So complex plus complex will be complex. I mean, all these uh, rules kind of. So you you don't you you should not be con confused that I'm using exactly the same set of complex numbers as both vectors and the scalars. Okay, fine. So let's do that, and let's just uh, uh, represent complex numbers as uh, x plus. as x plus i y. Okay? That's a real part and imaginary part. Okay, so how do I introduce uh, addition of this vector, let's say, and another one? Oh, as we are adding real parts, we are adding uh, imaginary parts, everything is exactly as in the com uh, complex numbers. Now I would like to uh, have a scalar product of this plus itself, like this. Now, a scalar product, if you have only one number, basically, it's a one-dimensional uh, space. So we define this as a, as a regular multiplication of complex numbers. Like in case of one-dimensional with real numbers, we just define a scalar multiplication as multiplication as normal real numbers. In complex numbers, we multiply. So, uh, how do we do it? Well, when we multiply, and we are using all these uh, commutative and uh, associative properties, what is this? It's x squared, x times x, plus x times i times y, plus i times y times x plus i times y times i times y, which is equal to x squared plus. Now, there is a commutative property of multiplication of complex numbers, so this is basically 2i x y. And this one is i times i, that's i squared. i is square root of minus 1, so i squared is minus 1, so it's minus y squared. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Well, what's wrong with this picture is this, because now we cannot say that this is greater or equal to zero. This is imaginary part. We cannot say that complex number which has imaginary part is greater or equal to any kind of a... Uh, there is no concept of greater or equal among complex numbers. And this minus also kind of prohibits, even if this does not exist, it's still minus, which means it cannot be always um, positive. Okay, so that's the problem, and we have to solve the problem. Now, how do we solve the problem? What I'm suggesting is we will change very, very slightly our axioms in such a way that in case of a scalar being a real number, 
it would not affect our axioms. But in case of scalar being a complex number, it will correct this little problem which we have. Okay, so what do I suggest? I suggest the following. Now, the first one was lambda times scalar product of AB is equal to lambda times A comma B equals 2. And here I will do slightly different thing. A lambda B and I will put conjugate. Now, what is uh, uh, horizontal bar on the top? Well, lambda is a complex number, right? So it's x plus y, e, y, y, i, y. Now, lambda conjugate is equal to x minus i, y. That's it. Very small correction, so to speak. So whenever you're transferring to the another member, you do this operation of conjugate. From lambda, you should use lambda with uh, uh, conjugation uh, sign. Now, incidentally, if you do lambda conjugate, if you do another conjugate, so, so what, what will it be? Instead of minus, you put minus minus, which means plus, right? So this one is equal to lambda. Double conjugate returns you basically to the same number. What's conjugate to, R, to i? Square root of minus 1. Well, obviously it's minus i, right? Because what is i? i can be represented as 0 plus 1 times i. Now, if you would change the sign 0 minus 1 times i, which is minus i. Okay, so conjugate to i is minus i. Okay, <coughs> so you know what conjugation is. So that's one modification. And the second modification is this one instead of regular commutative rule for scalar product, I do this. Now this is a scalar, right? So it's a complex number. So we are talking about S being complex. So V is abstract. V is abstract uh, vector space, but scalars are complex numbers. So if it's complex numbers, then we can actually know what this conjugation means. So A uh, and B scalar product would be a sub kind of a scalar. B and A would also be a scalar, but it should be conjugate to AB. Now, if our space is real numbers, the conjugate to real number, okay, if X plus conjugate would be minus. But what if it's our, our number is real number, not not a uh, really complex number? Then this piece would be zero. So conjugate or not conjugate, it doesn't really change. The real part remains the same. So what I'm saying is that slight modification in axioms for complex uh, scalar um, space doesn't really change anything for real numbers. So whatever we had proven for real numbers still remains all fine, no problem. Okay? Okay, now, you can actually very simply make sure that our little problem which I have introduced for uh, vector space being complex numbers now is actually solved. And here what it is. So let's just do x plus i y and x plus i y. Let's see if this would be a positive number, if it's not zero. Okay, let's do exactly the same thing as before. x times x plus x times iy plus iy times x times x and iy times iy. equals x times x remains as, as it is. Now here, I don't like i here. I'd like to have i outside. So what it will be? It will be i with a bar, right? 
if i is here and i would like i to be uh, uh, here this is a multiplier like right? complex number so i have to conjugate it outside so conjugate to i is 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 minus i actually i can put minus i already that would be correct minus i times x y here i can just take it out without modification so it will be plus i but that would be y x plus this i goes to outside as i with a bar the conjugate and the regular bar so it will be i and i conjugate y y now what is i times i uh, conjugate with well, i times minus i would be minus i square which is minus minus one which is one so this is one now x y and y x these are two real numbers right x plus y i i y x is a real part y is a uh, imaginary uh, uh, number i times y is imaginary but y itself is real part that's how we build our complex numbers so the uh, scalar product of real numbers is commutative which means x y and y x is exactly the same thing all right so this cancels this now this would be one so i will have x x plus y y and again all of these are real numbers and we know that scalar product of two real numbers is positive number it's x squared basically that's x squared plus y squared so unless our uh, complex number is a null vector which is zero zero unless that is positive and in case of zero it's zero so everything is fine all our axioms are okay so we have replaced a little bit our axioms corrected that would say for purely complex case it helps to overcome a little problem which i was talking about and in general abstract case that that's the way how hilbert space over complex s is really defined and what's important uh, in this particular case is as far as the vector space it can be uh, for example uh, like in this particular example it's a uh, just a set of complex numbers or it set it, it can be n vector of n complex vectors with traditional definition of uh, scalar product you multiply by coordinates and then sum them together in all these cases if we will define and we will use the axioms as we have modified them you will have uh, no problem and uh, multiplication of uh, any vector by itself would, would give you a non-negative result all right so the only thing which probably remains to be uh, proven is um, Cauchy schwartz bunikowski uh, inequality which is very very important for hilbert spaces let me just remind you what it is so if you have a scalar product of two numbers you take absolute value square it should be less than uh, a times a and b b okay you see here our angle brackets help because this is a real multiplication because a a and b b are scalars which is either real numbers or complex numbers but we assume right now we're talking about complex numbers and uh, this uh, is also a complex number right a a a scalar product with b which means it has absolute value and it can be squared right by the way what is a complex values uh, absolute value remember this if you have x plus i y what is absolute value of this well you can always represent it as a vector by the way with x and y coordinates and the absolute value would be the length of this which means it's x squared plus y square um well square root uh, basically if you if you're talking about 
real square if you're talking about absolute value. That's absolute value of x plus y. So that's the definition of absolute value. Or norm, if you wish, of number, of a complex number. Okay? So we have to prove this um, inequality. And we will prove it exactly the same way as we did in case of um, real uh, numbers as uh, as a scalar set. Okay, I will start with something obvious. So, obvious is a plus x times b um, a plus x x times b scalar product is positive. So, this is an axiom if we are talking about vectors, uh, abstract vector spaces. We have defined it in such a way that it satisfies all the axioms, including our modified axioms, then whenever we are changing the order, we should really um, go to, uh, to to conjugate. Okay, fine. So this is an obvious thing, and x can be any um, scalar, which means x can be any complex number. A and B are elements of abstract vector space. And I would like to prove this inequality if all the axioms are satisfied. And one of the axioms was that the product, scalar product of any vector with itself is positive unless it's completely zero and it's zero if it's zero. Okay, so we start with this. Great. So let's just open the parentheses. Equals. I'm using right now the associative and distributive uh, property. So first, a times a plus a times xb. So this is multiplication of a uh, scalar by vector. And this is scalar product of vector and vector. Plus xba and plus xb xb. Yes, multiplication equals. Okay, now, what I'm going to do right now, I will, since this is supposed to be true for any x, I will use exactly the same as in case with real numbers. I will put concrete uh, x a b divided by b b. Now, I assume that at least b is not equal to 0, okay? If b is equal to 0, by the way, that would be uh, uh, the uh, inequality, um, uh, which is basically a times a, and that's, a, uh, that's an axiom, so that doesn't really matter. If b is equal to 0, this is 0, um, and this is 0, and the obvious of this is a, uh, at least uh, not negative, and maybe even positive, so it will be greater than 0. So if b is equal to 0, it's all trivial. Now, b is equal, not equal to 0, and we will substitute it to here. All right, so let's see what happens. Equals to, okay, a, a remains without anything, plus a times x, b. Um, now, x can be uh, brought outside with x uh, conjugation, right? Now, by the way, what is what is x conjugate? That would be minus b b b a, right? Because conjugation of minus minus remains minus, so it doesn't really matter. This is some kind of a uh, um, 
complex number, right? So I have to basically change only the uh, sign of imaginary part. Now this is uh, uh, B and B, if I change this to imaginary part, doesn't really change anything. And this, uh, by the way, B and B is positive, so there is no imaginary part. A and B uh, is, has a real and imaginary part, so basically uh, minus and BB are basically our coefficients which, which do not affect basically the conjugation operation and I have to conjugate only AB so basically that would be the case. So whenever I would bring it outside X with the conjugation that would be this. So that would be instead of plus that would be minus. Um, B comma A divided by BB and times AB AB would remain, right? Now this one would be uh, this X is going outside without conjugation so it would be whatever it is right now which is Oh, I'm sorry, that would be plus, because there is a minus. This minus. So minus goes out. No, no, that's minus. That's right. I think it's... Am I right? Let me check. All right. We will figure it out. Now, again, minus. X goes out without modification. But what will be inside, that would be x was, what, ab divided by bb. And uh, what remains is ba. Plus. So this is minus, right? Okay, I changed B A. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, seems to be fine. And plus this one, so one x goes out as uh, regular x, another is conjugation, so it would be x x, now which is x square basically, right? So what will be if I will multiply x by x? Uh, it would be a b a b divided by b b square and minus and minus would be basically plus plus b b so what remains let's check <coughs> well first of all let's cancel one of the b b this is BB and this is BB square. So that's what remains. Okay? That's one thing. Now, next thing. What happens next? Okay. Um, supposed to cancel out. Why? We don't. I put both minuses, but I think I make a mis made a mistake. Whenever you are bringing this outside as this one, okay. Let me check with my notes this AA minus AB BA divided by BA okay and minus BA AB divided by BB okay and the next one oh I'm sorry here I made a mistake this is X times X 
this is x times x conjugate so it will be one will be a another will be b a I have to change the order conjugation that's that that was my mistake okay so one of them is x another is x uh, conjugation but bb remains the same and bb uh, I, I cancel out okay now everything is correct and the correct is that this thing and this thing are cancelling out and what remains well what remains is basically this thing which is greater or equal to zero right that's what we started which means if I will multiply it by BB and bring this outside that would be BA times AB on will be on the left on, and the right would be AA times BB and this is actually the same as this one because this is AB and AB BA and AB are conjugate, right? And this one is, as I was saying, remember? I was talking about X times X being basically norm X squared. Okay, that's basically the proof of this uh, inequality of cauchy schwarz bunikowski And that's the end of the, basically, my uh, talking about uh, complex uh, scalars applied to vector space to, to form a Hilbert space. Now, if you remember for truly, it's actually pre-Hilbert space. A truly Hilbert space, I mentioned that before, when every sequence, which is basically tends to some kind of a limit, should have that limit also part of the Hilbert space. But this is something which is not yet very important for you right now to understand what Hilbert space is. So that's basically the end of the uh, discussion about Hilbert spaces. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on uh, unison.com. You go to mass plus and problems, choose vectors as a part, and it's vector 10. And again, don't forget that vectors are really a relatively big um, uh, part of the course in this case. And uh, the previous lectures, like vectors 7, 8, and 9, are also dedicated to Hilbert space, and you might actually have to refresh it. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.